Hi friends, welcome to another monthly favorites. Can you believe that it is already the end of January? January is my birthday month. Shout out to all the January babies. I saw there were quite a few on social media. Hey, 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 what a month I have several points to cover from hair update, skin update, some makeup stuff, brush stuff. Where should I begin? Well, I wanted to start with the skin sobering update because the first time I took on the new habit of not using skincare was back in July last year, which would make it, let me see, that's about like the six, seven month point and little old me was expecting to just try this for 30 days and here I am full throttle committed to sticking with it for a year and I had some close-up shots here to show you and I'll post some side-by-side -side comparisons for when I started in July to how it's looking now and overall I'm I'm sold on the no skincare. I don't see myself going back and I wanted to make some clarification. So I did add a little some, just a little some. I do splash a little bit of my Enflorage Orange Blossom Water. It is a local essential oil shop in the West Village. And it was just something first and foremost before I applied my Vaseline and Vaseline is an occlusive. I needed the moisture on my skin, the hydration to actually be on my skin first and then I would apply the Vaseline after. And instead of just adding plain water, I'm like, you know what? This is an opportunity to spruce it up a bit. I will stay as minimalist as I have been, but I welcome the orange blossom water. Depending on the day, it could make me sneeze because it is fragrant. It's not too fragrant. It doesn't linger on my face. It's not perfumey whatsoever. I do enjoy the scent. Not only do I spray this on my face, but I spray this around the perimeters of my hair and then I slap on Vaseline to the edges here and also through my parts for my twist so and i'm actually halfway done with it i've been i've been using her okay and the skincare i do use in the demo here i have my sourdure and gothamista collab essence that i'm just gonna finish because i bought this when i was still using skincare at the time and i didn't want to waste it followed with my peach and lily matcha pudding cream and that's my usual prep before i apply foundation and i don't have an issue with using skincare before foundation because i see skincare as makeup I take it off at the end of the day. The difference is I'm not reapplying the peach and lily before bed or when I wake up in the morning. It's the orange blossom water and the Vaseline. That's it. And I've been doing well with it. Now, yes, is my skin not as glowy? Fine. Do I still have some dry, scaly parts? Yes, around my nose, in between the brows. And a week before my period arrives, I do have these like sebaceous filaments that I feel are more prominent during that time of the month and I'm okay with it. Overall, I just enjoy the simplicity of my skin routine and I do notice that not that my skin heals faster, I think it's now just on its regularly scheduled program. Before when I was using skincare, I think those products were interfering with the skin's timeline in healing any blemishes that are self-inflicted 100% and yes, it's hard for me to keep my hands off my skin. I am working on it. I like to squeeze my blackheads, I know so gross, around the brows and of, and of course still on the nose. So there was one blemish I had that healed rather quickly and again, I think it was just healing as it would usually do in terms of the time without the skincare, without any products or ingredients interfering with the skin's ability to heal itself because it has its own turnover schedule that is always relied on. But I think I was delaying it with the serums and the essences and the moisturizing and the blah, blah, blah. So now if I do inflict a blemish on myself, I'm getting better at it. it does heal quickly and with less marks left behind and you still see the marks you see them in the photos I'm okay with it because whatever foundation I choose to apply or concealer I like the coverage left behind I know you will have to be up close and personal to see any of the hyperpigmentation but for what it's worth I'm happy with the results I'm happy with the results and I'm not I'm not going back I'll go back to skincare. Can't do it. For foundation, however, so okay, this was the original plan. An old product, Shiseido's powder foundation in maple, but I saw on Charlotte's IG that Shiseido sent her the, like a new foundation and I was like, oh man, 
Shiseido kills at the foundation. Like Suku is made in Japan, the skin and makeup technology from Japan is just outrageous. And when I saw the consistency of the foundation, how it's skin-like, how it's serum-like, I'm like, sign me up. But I did use the powder foundation this month in conjunction with the Bichado powder foundation brush that Fude Beauty was so kind to send alongside other powder brushes that I have a video covering. It was my Fude on a budget, Fude under $50 video if you wanna check it out. But this powder foundation brush, plush, soft, dense and has a little bit of movement and I loved how this foundation looks on my skin. The day I did that video, I think because I was filming B-roll with the brushes and I used the Shiseido powder foundation and I saw myself in the mirror, I was like, that skin looks good. Despite the product being a powder, that's what I'm saying. And of course, I love the color maple on my skin tone. It's definitely on the warmer side, but not too warm. It's giving me a little bit of color, but still the undertone more or less balanced with a little bit of neutral still. Oak is the other shade that I toggle between. Oak might be a little too light, so that's why I went with maple, and of course, depending on the formula, the color could change a little bit. If you're my skin tone and you were looking at the new foundation, I think I would like to try 360 or th maple. I don't know if it's 350 in the new foundation. I have to double check, either maple or oak, depending on. But this Bichotto brush is just insanely good and at a great price point. I think it retails for $36 and for the amount of bristles that are packed in this brush, it's still handmade in Japan, lightweight handle, a fantastic find, especially if you are a wearer of powder foundation, just to have a beautifully dense brush to blend and buff powder into your skin that leaves behind a smooth finish is just necessary. You need to get, you need the tool. I segued into makeup a little bit, but let's take a pause and go over the hair. I filled my hair growth plan, and if you wanna check that out, is a get ready with me where I speak about the changes I was making to my hair care routine. And it's been a month, I know it is only a month, but I have a few revelations to share. Upon starting this journey, I was apprehensive because when I was at the salon getting my curly cut, and I understand curly cuts are not necessarily great for cutting ends, as the curly cut prioritizes shaping the hair, not so much cutting the ends, I might try to cut my own ends. That's a few weeks out. I'll give you an update on that. At the time, I was just going through my head, how will I wear my hair at the gym? And if I do twists, they just make me look, I'm from middle school. But as I did the twists and experimenting with different styling options, I noticed, I'm like, you know what, these ain't bad. And the outstanding benefit that I did not foresee when styling my hair in this way is now. We back to wearing beanies, baby. Listen, when I realized that I can now wear beanies again, I was thrilled because before with how I styled my hair, it was an updo. And as you know, with updos, the sides are slicked up. That's a part of the updo appeal. But it's hard to wear beanies when the hair is up. So I had my hair gathered here. At first, I let like the ponytail bang hang forward, and then it evolved into me clipping that hair at the top of my head. So the clip will kind of push the beanie out this way. It will look weird and like, okay, I'll take the clip away, but then I will have to wear it high up like this. I could now pull it down so the beanie actually covers my ears, you know, because when it's under 30 degrees, and I know some of you are experiencing far colder temperatures than that, I get it. But the ears get cold, and when I <laughs> try to wear my beanie up high to accommodate my updo, I'm like, this this is stupid. And yes, I could wear the wraparounds because I do have those accessories, but the beanie, and this one in particular is from Grace Aaliyah. I was shocked that I was able to buy this because it seemed through all the hats I was scrolling through, everything was out of stock. But I encountered this one and I do like it because it's extra big. It has a little more height here and the fold is wider. So I, and satin line, which is, 
basically why I went shopping on Grace Aaliyah because Grace Aaliyah is known for the satin line slap that you sleep with, the sleep slap. All the beanies are satin lined, all the hats are satin lined. It's just a fantastic site, but of course a lot of stuff is out of stock because it's just a hugely popular brand. I am so happy I got the taupe because this color goes with everything. It goes with my brown North Face, it goes with my, my flannel here that basically has it you see what I'm you see what I mean? It's a great match and I've been wearing the heck out of this hat. So my hair is protected from the inside. It doesn't have any rough friction. The ends are tucked in. Everything is good to go. I love I love this. I feel like such a hipster <laughs> now that I could wear beanies again. Uh, I was I've been wearing this one because of the satin lining. That was an integral part of my decision making. I can wear my other beanies that are acrylic on the inside as well. I think my hair will be fine, but I've just been reaching for this because it is beautifully warm, just well constructed, and just is, this is the best. I love this thing. Another discovery is because of how I explained how I was wearing my hair in the updo style, I didn't wear hoodies often because as you know, hoodies go over your head to put them on. It annoyed me to heaven. Every time I try to put on a hoodie, the size got frazzled. And then I said, okay, I could wrap a silk scarf around my head. I'm like, am I gonna do that every time I wanna wear a beanie? That doesn't make any sense. But now, now I'm wearing my anime hoodies to death. I'm rotating them more. I'm wearing my crew necks, my t-shirts, everything pull over head to put on is in heavy rotation. I have been enjoying this journey. And yes, the wash days are long. This current double twist situation took me like an hour and a half because I wanted to incorporate like little braids into the mix and parting all this hair could take could take a little bit of time, but I don't mind because the benefits that the time I spent on this hairstyle, the benefits that derive from my time investment are just invaluable. That I could wear hats, that I could put on different types of clothes now in my wardrobe that I have not worn all of last year or very little of because of the inconvenience of ruining my style. I'm, this is stupid. Now, we good. And yes, I have not yet received my package from Yugo Natural and I did email them. It's been over a month. I guess they've been receiving a lot of orders because of their Shark Tank feature, or I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. But it's been over a month and I would like, I would like the items that I ordered. I was thinking about canceling it, but I, but I want the wraps because I've been wearing my cotton wrap over my hair during training and I know cotton is not the best but I figured since I'm not wearing it every every day it's okay and it's just for that portion of the day that I'm training mm, I really want my satin line headbands so I'll keep you updated family with my Yugo natural package if it ever arrives but I truly love how the hair journey has been going. I know it's, again, just a month in, but I'm committed to the process. I've been alternating weeks with deep oil treatment and regular uh, conditioning treatments, like the creamy kind. I've been shampooing, I've been scrubbing, and everything's been going well. My scalp does get a little itchy, when it gets close to wash time, and I do wash once a week because of the sweat. I know people go longer, but I think because of my sweat, that does warrant a shorter wash day or a more frequent wash frequency for myself. I just put Vaseline on. <laughs> put Vaseline on my skin, put Vaseline in my hair. And you might be like, what are you doing? Well, you know, that's what people use. People refer to Vaseline as grease. When it comes to hair products and styling, grease is basically Vaseline. And I have no issues applying that to my scalp because it's non-comedogenic and it helps to retain the moisture because I think my scalp gets itchy because it's dried. It could be maybe from a certain ingredient from a product that I'm using, so I could look into that. Uh, maybe it just needs to be washed, and yes, when I wash it, that does help relieve uh, the itchiness for some time, and when it does feel like that, I just, and be done. I got it, ooh, ooh, what's that? Okay, we're okay. I had to lower that, the frame was like, 
Anyway, okay, one more hair thing to share. I did buy a new satin, or excuse me, a silk sleeping cap. This is from Clementine Sleepwear, and I encountered this online because I wanted to update my sleep bonnet. I did have, or still do have, a Grace Aaliyah silk bonnet. The Grace Aaliyah one is 100% silk, made in China, but that's fine because I think all the silkworms are in China. The Clementine Sleepwear one, let me see here. It just says 100% organic mulberry silk. I don't know what the difference is between regular silk and mulberry, but this one is also still made in China and as well as a slip silk products because again just the location and the resourcing that makes sense this one feels a little more luxurious 100 percent and what i've been using to go to bed and it's been tremendously helpful especially now since my hair is twisted it doesn't feel as tight and again i had my grace Aaliyah one but rarely wore it because my hair was just too puffed out and Every time I put the bonnet on, it just felt too tight and uncomfortable to sleep with. Alongside the bonnet, I also got this sleep mask. This sleep mask, look how big it is. And compared to the slip one, all right, let's make a side, look at this one right here is goaded. It is plush, thick, soft, and it covers. It covers, and that for me was vital because when I'm at Bay's, and unfortunately Bay doesn't have blackout curtains at his apartment in the bedroom, so this is the one I usually roll, but I stopped doing that and I just put this in the bag. I'm like, just don't forget this when you, when you go there. This still, see, I could see still from underneath. This, you ain't see nothing. There is no slice of light that's going past this mask, all right? I'm contemplating getting another one of these, and they're not cheap. They're not cheap, I get it, it's an investment, but I don't care, because it is worth it, especially if you value your sleep, and it is important for you to have the temperature right, the darkness right, right. and if you are in a space where there's too much light, if you live in an urban area or whatnot, or you just need to take a nap and light needs to be a limit, there you go. But isn't this cute? My dad was like, you look like a genie. I'm like, true. True, true. And also, when getting ready in the morning, I just keep this on, put the hoodie on, and it just slips right over, all right? Just easy. And then I'll put on my Grace Aaliyah beanie, and we are good to go to get the cortado. I think that's it for the hair and my several accessories that I acquired over the month. I've been loving it. I love this. This is this is fantastic. I know it does make me look younger, 100%, but I think with how I've been styling my twists and making it look elegant, you know what I mean? It's not bad. It's not bad at all. And I, I've been enjoying it. I was just too much in my brain about it and just assuming stupid things. That, that was my own-ish, right? I was holding myself back. And now, we out. We out and we're doing it we're embracing, let's go. Next up, we're gonna go to the makeup. We're gonna go into the makeup and I have to begin with Suku's Spring Color Collection and specifically the Moisture Glaze. The Moisture Glaze fam, where is it? Where, hold on, I'm sorry, I, it's in my backpack, you know, cause I've been using it. Suku Europe was kind enough to send me a partial part of it including the Moisture Glaze lipstick, but I'm gonna get into that in a minute. The blush is outstanding. I have both of the signature eye quads, but I have to say my favorite one, 134 with the mauves or the taupey mauves, I have it on here now and you can see on the B-roll, I actually use Sonia's Kiyaki Kakushibu eye set with these shadows. And I wore it also for my Stretch It app shoe and the glimmer and sparkle of the metallic, listen, it's not gonna be in your face Pat Metallic or Natasha Denona Metallic, but I just love the soft effect it has on the eyes. And I also paired it with Natasha's Berry Cheek Trio that, yes, I'm gonna get into that after we talk about the Suku, but I gotta say, this portion of the video is sponsored by Bay. Thank you, Bay. When he asked what I wanted for my birthday, well, actually, he didn't ask me that. I asked him first, I'm like, hey, what's the budget looking like for my birthday present? He's like, well, you got your eye on. I'm like, you know, well, there are these lipsticks. I really love these lipsticks and 
can you buy that from me? Because before that, I had a terrible time deciding which shade to buy because after I used 06 for the first time, it was a wrap. It was a wrap family. This, this lipstick formula is one of the most beautifully formulated items things I have in my collection. I, I know thing is a terrible word, excuse the, the lack of vocabulary right now. And I'm not a lipstick person. I'm not a lipstick person because the nature of the formula, how it tends to break down faster than powders and whatnot, but I could not, I could not hold back. And there was a little bit of mm, hesitation because the small possibility still exists where you buy all the shades of a certain line, they're all not, they're all not gonna look great. No. When I tried all the shades for my YouTube short, and every time I applied it, I'm like, ooh, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's beautiful, I love this. Each and every one. The color I was like, mm, I don't know, man, was the milky orange one. Let me see if I could find it. And by the way, these are all refills. You have to buy the case. If you wanna switch it out, you just take this guy out and then apply the other end. This is the milky orange shade, all right? This was the one that I was like, I don't know how that's gonna look. This one is gorgeous. The one I actually have on now is the red coral one. Let me see if I could find it. <laughs> so many. Yes, number three. This color I have on right now, I thought beautifully paired with a berry cheek trio because to give you coral, the berry's more berry, but because it's more like a peachy pink. And also, I applied Suku's blush from the spring collection on the center of my face, so I thought it was a good pairing. My goodness. This reminds me of the Moisture Rich, which is shiny, but that's more of a tint. And this is in the tint category, but it has more color than tint, definitely. I would say, Mm -mm, like wash, wash of color. And yes, it does bleed a little bit for sure. You have to be careful with how you apply it. It's just the nature of the beast. It is more slick and it is more shiny. If you want more control, I was sick with satin or the sheer matte. The sheer matte is a formula from the Suku lipstick lineup that definitely stays more put, or the Vibrant Rich. The Vibrant Rich might stay a little more put. It has emolliency, definitely more color. I did see that Hourglass came out with like a matte type of a uh, some some. So maybe that will work out better for you. Mm, but if you don't mind about a little bit of the bleeding, because it's not like a full on lipstick lipstick, I think will be all right. Just the feel of it, the shine, the balminess, Everything about this lipstick is outrageous. And the shades, you saw you saw the short. Every shade I applied blew my mind. I'm like, how do they manage to nail all 10? And they're different, they're all different. You could argue that this color I have on, the reddish coral kind of looks like the fresh pink, but it doesn't. Fresh pink, definitely more light pink, and the cinnamon one, okay, 01, maybe I could apply that now so you could take a look. I think 01 will be nice with what we got going on on the eyes and the cheeks. This is the cinnamon beige. I can't. I wore this for my Sonia G video. You see how lovely that is? I can't take it. And I love how it applies. It's just so, mmm is creamy, it has beautiful shine, my gosh. And if you wanted, you could definitely combine shades. So let's see, this is number 10, which is a brown red. I could tap that over the cinnamon beige for a little bit, a little bit more color. That's pretty, that's pretty. I love how that looks. I love all 10. I better not buy a, a single, lipstick product after this. And yes, this was my birthday gift. There was one hourglass shade I had my eye on. I think it was Orchid. It was like a deep rose something. You know how I am with the deep roses and the fact that it has more of that matte finish, I think translates better for me than the satin finish because I have Larch and I do like how Larch looks with the satin finish. But let me know if you have the moisture glaze 
because man, I can't stop wearing these. I absolutely can't. They just, it tops off all of my looks and I'm just more inclined to mix up my lipstick shades because usually I just apply the same thing since it's easier, but now with these shades, they're so distinct and easy to reach for and to pair with several of my eye looks now and also my blush looks if I decide to go without eyeshadow. So it's just been a ball. I adore this product. It's one of Suku's best. I do like it more than a wrapping lip treatment. I don't know, there's something about it. Can't explain. You see, see the evidence. And of course, Natasha Denona's Berry Cheek Trio. I'm happy she went berry. A lot of people were like, I wish she went pink. I'm like, you know how many times she gave us the pinks? Okay, she gave us pink with the Love Cheek Duo. She gave us pink with the Love Cheek Palette before that. Pink in the Love Face Palette and what pink in the My Dream Cheek Trio. Absolutely, I'm happy she went berry. Thank you. And one of you had said maybe orange sherbet. I'm like, oh my gosh. If she went orange with this formula, that will be outrageous. I think it will be so beautiful and a great pairing to the bronze. Maybe she could pull it off from a bronze lineup perspective since she likes to stay consistent with a lot of the color concepts that are already existing in her brand. She can definitely pull off the orange cheek trio shade in Spo from the bronze concept in her collection. She could definitely do that because I loved the bronze face palette, not the tan bronze and glow, the bronze face palette with those putty textures that people hated, but I loved. If she could do a cheek trio, but with more of like an orange terracotta color in this formula, and although it's cream to powder, you saw on the B-roll I used a brush to apply it. It has such a nice zhuzh to it that you can apply it like a powder. And I did it both ways. I applied it in the punch down manner with my Mizuho brush on my YouTube short. And for this demo, I applied it like a powder. Again, it does have that creamy consistency, but because it's on the drier side, you can apply it like a powder, and I think it, the color richness is just outrageous. Just that beautiful true to berry color, and I combine it with the Suku blush from the Spring Color Collection. What a great pairing. I mean, I look blushed out of my mind, but I, I love how it looks. And the highlighter is fantastic alongside the cream color that definitely is more coral leaning than berry. It adds more intensity in shine and in color when you apply it low on your cheeks. It might not be great if you're lighter on the cheekbones, but I did apply it lower here closer to the apples of my cheeks and I took advantage of the finish to then apply the highlighter on top and I think it does balance it out for it to look lighter here on the cheekbones for that highlight effect and more of the color payoff to sit low so it could create that natural gradient of color and highlights. And that's about it. I do have a gift card from Sephora that was given to me by Maddie's mom. Thank you, everybody. I'm holding off because I know that they do hold their spring sale soon in April. I don't mind waiting. I would feel so dumb to buy anything full price now because I just have a gift card. So I'm trying to wait. I'm trying to wait so I could get a little something off. 20% off. If I'm still eligible, I have to check on that. Hmm. Have my eye on a few things. Definitely want to get the Shiseido foundation. I do want to get one of those shades from the Hourglass lipstick. I know I just said that I shouldn't be buying any more lipstick, but I'm sorry. I did it. Just one shade, just one, not all like I did with the moisture glaze. The brush game has been amazing. As you know, I just uploaded my Sony G Kiyaki Kakashibu eye set that would naturally go into February because I just reviewed it. But a note about that brush set, it's just so beautifully crafted. I highly recommend that you read her blog because when you fully understand the effort that goes into making these tools, everything from the wood polishing to the dyeing of the bristles that takes long because the fruit, the actual persimmon fruit, has to grow and then has to ferment for like a year or so. Lori and I were talking about this and make sure you check out her video when she reviews Sonia's set. It's outrageous. You need a special tool to create the ferrule for the T6 because the ferrule, how it's crimped, is what gives that brush that fan out and it's different from her Holiday Crane set. You see how this is 
well actually is a little similar i'm not sure if it's exactly the same but you see there's a little bit of a fan out here from the t6 i still have to use these brushes they're washed okay sonia also sent me her holiday set look how beautiful these are blue squirrel all right the first time we have blue square oh that's nice Ooh, I like that. We got the lay down brush. I have to get into this set. I might do a YouTube short. I'm not exactly sure if I will dedicate an entire video to the crane set. I might just have to because there are only four. There are only four. I could, I could definitely do that, but I have to read up on the process through which these were made so I could just give you the full lowdown. But my goodness, Sonia's tradition set blew me away. It truly blew me away. And knowing how much that went into creating these brushes just makes them all the more special. And people, I think when they see the price, they just see the price and that traps them. It just puts blinders on them and it doesn't allow them to fully understand why it's that expensive. I mean, it's expensive when you have people hand making things it's just it's expensive when you have to buy locally sourced materials to create the dye the wood's expensive the process through which you have to polish the wood is expensive the person the artisan who is highly skilled you gotta pay them you gotta pay them to do this high level of artisanal work okay for the amount of brushes they have to make so that's why is expensive and if she makes a face set with these handles that's going to be expensive because it's the exposed wood by the way i love the silhouette because it just feels nice in the hand right it's like when you're holding a pencil or a pen that has the groove here on the center of its body that it just feels easier to hold mm, i'm just telling you top to bottom is just outrageous because i do have the koido kakishibuzomi set that i reviewed years ago this is also made with persimum dye Whoa, Sonia, listen, if you make face brushes with the Kiyaki wood and the persimmon dyed bristles, or will she go blue squirrel? Huh? Maybe she'll wait for this holiday season for the blue squirrel face brushes as like a more edited set. And then maybe next year we'll get Kakashibu face brushes. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. I'm putting out an orange tone cheek trio from Natasha Denona. I'm putting out there a Kakashibu face set from Sonia and a better mothership from Pat. Closing remarks about Pat. Yes, I did not buy her love collection set. The eyeshadows were repeats from her Starstruck Splendor face and eye palette from Holiday. And I did have my eye on Nude Nocturne. And I still have my eye on that shade, by the way. I'm not jumping the gun because if there's an opportunity I could get it from Sephora on sale, if it's available during the sale, I'm definitely picking it up then. The highlighter looks gorgeous, but I have something similar from a previously released collection. So I'm not jumping the gun on that. The thing is, when you saw her most recent work for the uh, Maison My Margiela, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, it reminds you that Pat is still an artist, that she still has this vision. And unfortunately, <laughs> artistry and capitalism don't go well together, right? Because you have to then put the numbers up, but sometimes artistry wise, it's not going to bring those numbers because art is art. It's subjective. It, it evokes certain emotions from certain people. Sometimes it hit, sometimes it doesn't. So you have to play it more safe, more conservative in order to ensure that you're going to meet your quota. Despite that, despite my disappointment in Mothership 11, despite my disappointment in her in her recent collections, which I speculated the reason why that happened because with resourcing and supply chain issues, you usually have to think a year or two ahead. And maybe during that time when all the industries were having trouble with shipping and getting their materials to produce items, I mean, it was crazy. You have to wait forever for furniture and all these other things. Perhaps the brand was stuck with certain shadows and whatnot because that was all that was available. Maybe Italy was like, this is what we got right now. PML. And just to get rid of that, just to kind of use what they have, 
the collections were subpar, the mothership was subpar. Hopefully, perhaps they were able to get their hands on better ingredients and materials. Maybe they were they were back in Blitzland. Maybe we'll get the bake formula in Mothership 12. Perhaps we had to wait a year just so the brand can clear out whatever they needed to get just to keep the sales going and maybe product plans will be better for 2024. That's all I that's all I can say because when I see her work it still gives me hope. It still is it still reminds me okay hey maybe she's stifled by the brand maybe she doesn't care about the brand anymore and she's putting all of her creative energy into the runway shows which is her main job i mean that was the first thing she's done and the makeup came afterwards maybe it's tough for her to fully present what she wants because of you know listen who's gonna buy that type of conversation right i'm not entirely sure what goes on but i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that we'll maybe see something better this year from the brand. I'm hoping we could get our Blitz triple digit Astral VR textures back in Mothership 12. I'm hoping it's not going to be another glorified 10 pan shadow palette because that I feel was Sunlit Seduction. It's a beautiful palette, don't get me wrong. And many of you have written when filming my other Mothership videos that you adore that palette. But texture wise, it just doesn't hold a candle to one through eight in my eyes. Even Moonlit Seduction, despite not it having the special shades, I think was an outstanding effort by the brand. One of my personal favorites for sure. We could only wait and see friends. And with that said, those are my January favorites. Let me know what yours have been down below. I will see you in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here with another brush video, eyeshadow palette, something, something, or a pat product. You never know. Take care and I will see you again soon.